Alan Reefer Gill here. In today's video, we finally get done with the plumbing. I decided to go with the gray and orange theme to match my Apex equipment, which will be displayed inside an Apex cabinet. I did do a video on the cabinet, a link to that will be down below in the description. As I started collecting all my PVC fittings for the plumbing, I started to see fittings like the gate valves and the ball valves came with red handles. I thought to myself, well, that's not going to go with my theme. So I took to some painter's tape, grabbed myself some Rust-Oleum orange spray paint for plastics, and started to go to town on the red valves. In total, I sprayed about three to four coats. You can see a side-by-side -side comparison here to what would have been and to what will be. I think the orange touch will help bring everything together, but we shall see. Now I had tons of spare Schedule 40, the white stuff, PVC fittings, including Street 90s. Well... To keep with the theme and to save myself some extra money on buying Schedule 80 PVC fittings, I decided to get myself a couple of cans of gray Rust-Oleum spray paint for plastics. Now I also had spare Schedule 80 fittings that I used before dipping into my reserve of painted Schedule 40 fittings. I took the white Schedule 40 90s T fittings and painted those gray. I was careful not to paint those areas where I'd be applying primer and glue. Doing so would gum up the paint and would flaw any attempt to make the for a watertight seal. I even took apart my Omega 150 skimmer and painted it. Rest in peace Omega 150, I dropped this on the edge of a cement step and cracked the body. I was so mad at myself I took the entire skimmer and just dumped it in the trash in a fit of rage. After a couple hours I went back into the trash and at least recovered the pump. A costly stupid mistake to say the least. Okay so by now you're starting to understand the level of OCD this YouTuber has. And to answer your questions, none of the parts that I painted would be in direct contact with the water. The industry standard is to use fusion spray paint for plastics for any parts that would be submerged in the water. Okay, so enough of all of that. Let's get into the pre-planning of my plumbing. Plumbing is definitely one of those things that can be intimidating to a new reefer and is extremely frustrating when mistakes are made. The first thing you want to do is plan and draw out your desired plumbing design. Once you've done that, count how many fittings to include ball valves and unions that you'll need. Create a checklist and go over it several times to ensure you got everything. Once you're absolutely positive you got the right number of fittings, go out and buy yourself some more fittings because chances are your figures will be wrong. Once you have everything, lay out all your fittings and go down your checklist. A very frustrating part about plumbing is wasting time going back and forth to your local hardware store. Try to minimize this by buying more than you need. You can always return what you haven't used or just keep it for future projects. I'd also recommend that you organize all your fittings together so that your 3 quarter inch 90s are together, your 3 quarter inch T fittings are together, your 1 inch unions are together, and so forth. I labeled these large Ziploc bags and separated all the fittings from one another. This way I know where to go when I need that particular fitting. Now when it comes to unions or the gate valves and ball valves that have the unions attached to them, I suggest you unscrew them to ensure the o-ring is where it's supposed to be. I found two unions that were missing the o-ring and without them I would surely have had a leak. So now that I'm ready to start to dry fit, I cleared out a work area to help me stay organized. The more organized I am, the better I'm able to focus on the task at hand. I'm going to start off my plumbing using the cheaper Schedule 40 PVC. If I'm going to make a mistake, I'd rather hack up the cheaper white PVC than the orange PVC. The first step was to dry fit the PVC runs with the PVC fittings. Dry fitting means that you're not using any glue. You don't have to shove the PVC run all the way into the PVC fittings. If you shove these pieces in too far, then you're going to have a heck of a time trying to take them apart later. Most of my cuts were guesstimations based on some raw measurements. I had planned on plumbing the emergency drain into the last section of the sump. I even had the builder of the sump install a 1 inch bulkhead here for that purpose. But as I started plumbing it as I had originally planned, I saw a problem with my design. If I place my emergency drain in the return section of the pump, then that leaves me little room for my uh, plumbing for the return pump and even less room for the dosing hoses that I had planned to also install here. So instead of placing the emergency drain into the bulkhead in the return section of the sump, I decided to run the emergency drain into the refugium section. As for what was going to be the emergency drain bulkhead, I removed the 1 inch bulkhead and installed a 3 quarter inch bulkhead. The 3 quarter inch bulkhead will accommodate the plumbing from my return pump. The new design makes a lot more sense and it won't create all that clutter in the return section of the sump. Another observation that concerned me were the connections of the street 90s for the returns into the bulkheads. They felt extremely loose. 
I was afraid that the glue alone wouldn't give me a watertight seal, so I decided to use male threaded street 90s into female threaded 3 quarter inch bulkheads. Anytime you're connected two threaded pieces together, you should use Teflon tape to secure a watertight seal. I feel a lot more confident there won't be a leak here now. Once I was done dry fitting the white PVC, I measured each section and measured again and again. I made notations on the PVC to include the measurements. These will become my template for cutting the orange PVC to length. If you use this method, then the next step is very, very important. These measurements do not include that amount of PVC that drops into the PVC fitting. Most PVC fittings allow the PVC to drop into them by about one inch with some exceptions. So if I marked a white PVC run and labeled it 12 inches of visible PVC, then I know I need to add two more inches to length for the final cut to be 14 inches of the orange PVC, one extra inch for each end of the PVC that will be dropping into a fitting. These check valves only allow the PVC to drop in three quarters of an inch, so they're one of the exceptions. As for dry fitting the manifold, I didn't need to dry fit all the ball valves. All I really wanted was the total length of each end of the manifold. I only have one board to support the manifold using the PVC clamp, so I planned out my spacing to accommodate the PVC clamp against that wooden backboard. Once I was all done dry fitting the white PVC, I literally spent hours staring at my plans. Drawing up plans are great, but actually physically seeing them come to life is much more helpful. I pondered and pondered on what I can do to improve the design before fully committing to gluing everything together. Using high-end ball valves and gate valves and pricey color PVC, the plumbing on this project wasn't cheap. After kicking around some ideas, I decided to add unions to each of the bottom of the return lines and add a second ball valve to the drain coming out of the wall. Should the gate valve in the back of the tank controlling the drain for water changes ever get stuck open on me during a water change, I'd have to run all the way downstairs into the garage and grab the ball valve near the slop sink to close it. By then I could have drained half my tank. The new design will give me a backup ball valve behind the tank to close in case of that sort of an emergency. Before I started to cut and glue the PVC, I protected my work area with some plastic painter sheets and later added some cardboard pieces. The fumes that come out of these little cans of primer and glue are super duper strong and can actually make you physically sick. I made sure to open any nearby windows and allow the fumes to escape the house. Better yet, do this outside. At the time this video was made, winter was upon us so I was forced indoors. Just a suggestion, grab yourself some clear primer and clear glue. Using colored primer will make a mess of things. The clear primer is much more forgiving. I'd also suggest wearing protective gloves. I started to dismantle the dry fit PVC runs one section at a time. I added two inches to whatever measurements I wrote down on the white PVC and started to make my cuts and gluing everything together. If you're using fittings that you've painted like I did, then be very careful with a primer. Don't allow any of it to drip onto your painted fittings, otherwise it'll strip the paint right off. After applying the glue and primer, make sure you push the PVC runs all the way into the PVC fittings and hold for several seconds. If you don't, the PVC will want to push itself out. This won't only screw up your measurements, but it can also cost you a watertight seal if the pipe pushes itself out far enough. Now I know everyone says this, but it's 100% true. Use unions. They're not cheap, but man, not only do they make it super convenient to, to uh, disassemble PVC runs, but they also make for getting the right angles so much easier. Just be sure to install them right side up so that when you turn them to the right, they tighten and left turns loosen. If you're running a manifold, you can use unions at both ends of the manifold. Use them wherever you can. Just make sure they're appropriately tightened to avoid any leaks. When it came to designing my manifold, I designed it with more ball valves than I think I'll ever need. Starting off on the right side, there's a vertical ball valve going straight into the right return line. This ball valve is very important in order to create back pressure and force water through the main manifold. I can also completely shut it off and create a closed loop system within the sump. Next I have this ball valve which I will use to run my GFO carbon dual reactor. I didn't have enough room to put a union on this short run but one would have been ideal here. Next I have a T fitting where my core pump will push water up from the bottom and up to the T. After that, a union and three more ball valves. I'll use one of the ball valves to push flow inside my refugium to achieve that desirable tumble of the chato, and the other two will be spares. Then we come to another union and a T fitting. A second vertical ball valve leading up to the left return line in the display. 
This ball valve will likely remain open during normal uh, operation, but I can close it to create that closed loop system. Moving to the far left of the manifold is yet another ball valve. Here I'll attach a hose and drop it into the skimmer section to keep the detritus suspended and allow the skimmer to pick up any floating matter. Manifolds are great because you can use them to run equipment like reactors, chillers, algae scrubbers, UV sterilizers, just to name a few. All can be run off your manifold which means those pieces of equipment won't need independent pumps. Removing pumps that would have otherwise been required means that you're also removing that undesirable heat that is generated by the pumps, which is especially important during the hot summer months. It frees up an outlet, saves you on energy consumption costs, and gives your sump a cleaner look with less electrical cords coming out of it. Let's go over the rest of the finished plumbing. If you've been following me, you know that I've designed a bucketless water changing system. This ball valve will open the drain in the lower left corner of the tank. This will allow me to drain however many gallons of water from the main display for water changes. The water will drain out through a hose connected from this hose barb to the hose barb coming out of the wall. From there the water will drain down behind the wall and make its way down into my slop sink in the garage. I have a Vectra M1 pump ready to go in the salt water mixing bin downstairs. That pump will push newly mixed salt water up through the wall through a hose that will be connected to the 3 quarter inch hose barb and up through this PVC run behind the tank. I have a ball valve here to control and turn off the flow of water that is replenishing that amount of water that I had drained. The Vector M1 pump will be hooked up to my apex to allow me to turn it on and off from upstairs. I'll quickly go over the Synergy Reef drain system. I already did an in-depth video on this already, the link to that will be down in the description below. The main drain will come down one and a half inch PVC pipe and then it is reduced down to a one inch pipe after the one and a half inch union. I then installed a one inch gate valve here for a silent full siphon bean animal overflow. The pipe continues to a second union then drops into a one inch bulkhead in the skimmer section of the sump. The secondary drain was plumbed in the same manner as a primary drain minus the gate valve. That drops right next to the primary drain into a second bulkhead. And the emergency drain, as discussed earlier, is plumbed the same way as the two other drains, except that's going to drop into the refugium section of the sump. Lastly, there are two returns from the sump into the display. Both returns are 3 quarter inch size PVC. I decided to use check valves on each drain. Both check valves are pre-installed with union connections. It is very important to note that the check valves were not installed to prevent any sort of flood in my sump area in the event of a power outage. Being dependent on check valves to prevent flooding in your sump is extremely risky. Your design should include your sump being able to handle that amount of water that will drain down from the display into the sump area in the event of a power failure. The purpose of these check valves in my application is to keep as much water as possible in the display. The more water in the display means the more water I can drain for the bucketless water changing system. Otherwise, if the check valves were to fail, my sump would be able to handle that additional water coming from the display. Now it's a waiting game to allow the glue to set. I'll be doing a leak test in a future video. So that's it for my plumbing for now. What do you guys think so far? If you're new to the channel, please hit that subscription button. Hit that like button. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram and we shall see you guys next time.